Welcome to the 2006 Cupertino Crest Awards, where Cupertino recognizes the extra steps taken in our community. Before we go forward, let us take a look back at a few past Crest Award recipients. Since the couple's involvement three years ago, the project has grown from eight participating schools to 18. It's the easiest way that I know of contributing to something that my children are involved in. Janet's volunteer efforts don't stop in the schools she regularly visits. She recently teamed up with other officers and Special Olympics athletes waiting tables for a benefit called Tipicop. My idea is better to give rather than to receive. That's my philosophy. It's the volunteerism, really, that makes Rotary work. It makes any service club work, actually. It wasn't long before Chuck began volunteering for the Fremont Union High School District Foundation Board. For the past four years, he has served as treasurer of the board, but the role he plays reaches far beyond that position. A lot of times these kids have very challenging home situations or life situations. Of course with me, I'm, bringing, I'm doing a lot of art, bringing art into their lives. Last year, the Faith in Action Project took in a total of 94 homeless men who were referred by CCS. Ken's knack for getting along with people and making friends is also evident at Cupertino Community Services, another organization that has benefited from his volunteerism. The chairman of Cupertino National Bank, Don has been active in the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce and the Rotary Club of Cupertino for years. He served as president last year of Rotary and says the group's Oktoberfest is a favorite event of his because it brings so many people together. When the Cupertino Historical Society was formed, Gail's parents were among the first to join. She followed soon after and she's been a member now for nearly 30 years, presently on the board of directors. For more than 20 years, Oren has been performing a balancing act between his family, his career at Hewlett Packard, and his work in the community. And when the church needed painting, my dad would say, son, church needs painting. And so my brother and I painted the church. It's, it's, it's a tremendous satisfaction, uh, you know, when you're able to provide some kind of, uh, fulfill some kind of need. Since its inception nearly 20 years ago, CIF has raised more than $7.2 million for local school programs such as art, music, computers, and teacher training. I think I have been a volunteer for the last 30 years, so to me it's just like breathing. You know? Barbara Hill is a school librarian who's written the book on how to get involved. Her trademark dedication is imprinted on every event, large or small, at St. Joseph of Cupertino School. Although he retired in 1995 after 10 years as pastor of St. Joseph's, Monsignor Milani continues to tend to the needs of his flock and to those of the Cupertino community. Laverne manages Sunnyview's little nonprofit store and its volunteers. She does all the shopping for it and acts as bookkeeper as well. Marge and Alan Tanaguchi found their passion about seven years ago when their daughter visited Japan as part of a student exchange delegation from Cupertino. The biggest reward from having belonged to this group for 10 years was once a month I get an education from our guests. The Cupertino Library volunteers from high school students to seniors share that passion for books. Some of the adults have been volunteering for 17 years, and the teens often stay until they move away to college. This saying that people say is so true, that when you volunteer and when you give to the community and to individuals, you really do get more out of it than you're able to give. were just a few recipients of the past Crest Awards. And now, to begin the 2006 Crest Awards,
the city manager of Cupertino, David Knapp. Hi, and welcome. One of the unmistakable hallmarks of a truly great community is the extent to which its residents volunteer. And given the quantity and the quality of the volunteering that happens in Cupertino, this is indeed a great community. Because volunteering creates community. When people take responsibility for and care for each other, community happens. We're here tonight to celebrate volunteers and the communities they have created. Before we present this year's Crest Awards, I want to recognize a volunteer organization which puts in endless hours, doing very tough work, uh, late hours, gets as much criticism as praise for the job that it does, nonetheless presses on doing an outstanding job, and that's our Cupertino City Council. You see four of our council members because the fifth council member is doing some volunteer work. <laughs> and now I'd like to present our mayor, Mayor Richard Lowenthal. Thank you. Uh, they said I should make some brief remarks and they, put bold, they bolded brief, so I'll try to follow my direction. Uh, you know, uh, there's a thing that I call the miracle of Cupertino, and some of you are bored probably with this speech because I've given it before. But, um, you know, you, you've got to know that the Cupertino School District is the lowest funded district in our county, and our high school district and, and, and CUSD are both one of the lowest funded districts in our state. Uh, our city receives the least amount of uh, share of property tax of any city in the state. Uh, of your tax dollar, we get four cents. Uh, and there's, a, frankly, a state law that says we should never get less than seven, but we get our four. Uh, so we don't get much money, and Dave's staff is tiny. Uh, and in fact, uh, if they weren't so, so good, our staff is so good, uh, we couldn't operate this city. But the miracle is the gap that closes the, uh, the low funding that we have uh, to an excellent city, award-winning schools. We always have the top elementary school in the state, you know, uh, and uh, two of our, our uh, high schools are always in the top five in the state. Uh, and our city is a fine city to live in, and the streets are the best, and the parks are great, uh, and the difference is made up by volunteerism. That's how it works. Otherwise, it's, you know, it, it's, it's an unexplainable miracle. Um, but it's volunteerism that is that miracle. And today we celebrate uh, some of our greatest volunteers, uh, and I couldn't be more pleased to be involved, frankly, and be able to stand up with some of you. So let's get started. Uh, our first recipient tonight is Steve Ting. A Cupertino resident for 25 years, Stephen Ting feels right at home in lots of different places, especially in places where he's most needed. Whether it's sitting on the boards for the Northwest YMCA and the Cupertino Historical Society, or roaming a golf course raising money for the Cupertino Educational Endowment Fund, or working behind the scenes at the Lunar New Year Unity Parade, Steve fits in easily, effectively, and enthusiastically. In addition to his work with many local nonprofits, he's an advocate for children with special needs, serving as a board member for the Organization of Special Needs Families and helping to raise funds for that group. The youth of Cupertino have always been close to Steve's heart, and he spent countless hours advising high school interact clubs last year. And his work with the Cupertino Rotary Club has also had a huge impact on young people in the city. A Chinese immigrant who has been in the U.S. for 35 years, Steve has poured his considerable energy into building bridges between many different cultural groups in Cupertino. Even city government benefits from Steve's volunteerism. He's on the Cupertino Technology Information and Communications Commission, and he's proved himself to be a valued advisor to our elected leaders. Steve Ting doesn't just live in a house on a street in Cupertino. He lives wholeheartedly within the entire community.
So um, that picture doesn't look much like Steve because he's always smiling. It's an unusual picture. Uh, Steve couldn't be here tonight because he's volunteering, as you might expect, just like Oren is. Uh, Steve is over in China uh, working on a project with the uh, Rotary Club of Cupertino, uh, uh, helping outfit schools in, in the uh, sort of the outback of China. Uh, so uh, he couldn't be here tonight. He would love to have been here tonight. But he did send uh, his daughter, Vicky. And Vicky, if you could come up, and his uh, good friend, Larry Dean. So if you could both come up to the stage, please. We'd appreciate it. How about a round of applause for Steve? So you heard a little bit in the video about Steve. Uh, he, is, like me, is an, is an old high-tech guy. He was in high-tech for 25 years. Uh, and he had his fill of it and left and retired at a very young age. Uh, darn it, he looks younger than me, but, uh, but I, he tells me he's not, but it's hard to believe. I think it's the shoe polish in his hair that makes the difference. Um, he does indeed currently serve on the, uh, the uh, Technology Commission for the city uh, and on a lot of other things. The Cupertino Educational Endowment Foundation Board, the Northwest YMCA Board, the Cupertino Historical Society Board, the Shinshin Educational Foundation Board, uh, Cupertino Rotary where he is Director of Youth Services. Uh, he's uh, really a founder of the Lunar New Year Parade with me and Michelle Hu. Uh, he's on the board of the Organization of Special Needs Families, which we'll hear a little bit uh, more about later. Um, and um, you know, besides that, uh, he was an engineer for a great many years in high tech. Uh, he um, is a good friend of mine. And in fact, uh, he helped us through a, a really difficult issue for us. If you'll remember back a few years, uh, now it seems a, quite a while back, but we had a, a lot of difficulty here with cultural change and with immigration and Chinese folks coming in and Indian folks coming in. Uh, and Steve was absolutely key to us all living together as neighbors. Uh, and those issues are, for the most part, gone now. Uh, and a lot of that is, is, uh, is Steve's greatest accomplishment in my view. Uh, he helped the city, he helped me, uh, and he helped other people in the city make it so that we could all be great neighbors. And I think that's, that's true today. And I think, frankly, his greatest accomplishment. So um, I'm, I'm very happy to see that Vicki could make it tonight. And, and Larry, they're good friends. And, and I think uh, maybe if you, if you have a, let's see, we do the award here first, I see. So let me present the award. Uh, and I think there's enough for everybody to get something to carry. So we have this very nice thing, which one day I hope to earn. Uh, the uh, 2006 Crest Award. I'll give that to Larry because it's small. <laughs> and here we'll, we have a proclamation, and I'm going to read the first one, and, I, and maybe we won't all have to read them because they are, they are similar, but um, basically it's a proclamation from the council and the mayor uh, that says that Steve Ting is known throughout the Cupertino community as an individual who epitomizes how to care and help by generously giving of his time and energy for a multitude of local charities and events. And whereas with a strong commitment to his neighbors and community, Steve Ting works both in front of and behind the scenes for numerous important causes. And whereas Steve Ting leads and supports a multitude of community events, organizations, and individuals, his efforts are a foundation upon which many build their success. Now, be it resolved that I, Mayor Richard Lowenthal, and the City Council do commend and recognize 2006 Crest Award winner, Steve Ting. So Vicki, I'm wondering if you'd like to say something first. Thank you. Yeah, well, I am a tip off of the old block. I need opportunity to have a little speech. Um, so I'm honored to receive this order, award on behalf of my father. Um, he is an amazing individual and I'm so so happy that the city of Cupertino recognizes and appreciates him as much as his family does. Um, he gives so much of himself to the city and I don't remember any dinner <laughs> that we have had where he doesn't discuss the city and all of the things that he want, wishes that he could do for it and um, all the projects that he's working on. It really, you know, just to hear the passion in his voice is really inspiring. So um, thank you so much for recognizing him and for this award. I know he would love to be here. I'm sure he and Mr. Mahoney are on a golf course somewhere you know, bemoaning the fact that they couldn't be here, absolutely. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Larry, 
Come on up and say something for your good friend. Th thank you, Richard. Um, as uh, R R Richard spoke about Steve's involvement in the community, and I've uh, uh, worked with him uh, for a number of years, we've gotten to become very good friends over the time. And actually, and this is news to uh, Vicki, but in our conversations, we found out that we are probably related. Uh, because in China, the name Ting is really pronounced Dean. <laughs> and, and we got to talking about it. And, and you know, the Chinese had a great navy uh, uh, centuries and centuries ago. And we figured that one of the ships sunk. And some, some of the sailors made it to the southern shores of Ireland, <laughs> where, where my dad's family came from. So one, one of Steve's strengths, is, as Richard alluded to, is, is working in the community. And I certainly uh, 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 see Steve as a brother, brother of mine, and, a, and a, uh, uh, the camaraderie that we've developed in, in helping the community and in helping Steve serve the community has just been a joy. So, uh, Vicky, I didn't mean to break this on you, but I think that we're probably, you know, we have some kinship back there, and we'll talk about that later. But on behalf of Steve, uh, thank you very much. Great job, and thank you for coming tonight and accepting the award on Steve's behalf. So it's my pleasure now to introduce our next presenter, uh, your vice mayor and my good colleague, Chris Wang. Thank you, Richard, that was very really sweet. All right, um, the second recipient for this year's Equesa Award is John Gionola. Let's review the tape first. After years of involvement in the community, John Giovanola's reputation as a tireless volunteer is rock solid. The community affairs manager for Hanson Permanente Cement in Cupertino is the go-to guy when someone needs a helping hand. You meet a lot of nice people. Uh, you enjoy doing the work that you, uh, that you do. Uh, you raise some money for some good causes, and uh, so it kind of becomes a habit. John's habit has led him to board positions for the Rotary Club and the Chamber of Commerce. It's brought him to the forefront of benefits for the local elementary and high school districts and for CCS. It's made him a familiar face at community building events like the Golden Jubilee and the Lunar New Year Unity Parade. But you know, we find uh, the same people uh, working in, in the chamber, in Rotary, in CCS, in the, the uh, local school district activities. The Fremont Union High School District just had a crab feed the other night. And uh, so you find many of the same people in Cupertino volunteering for a variety of organizations. Uh, and so you see friends and, and it's fun to work. Those who know John call him the Energizer Bunny for obvious reasons. Whether he's out there raising $40,000 for the Hanson Rotary Benefit Golf Tournament, taking kids shopping and fishing, or working at a rotating shelter, the guy just keeps on going and going. I mean, there are enough organizations here and there's enough need, not only in this community, but in a lot of other communities. Uh, just a step forward. You'll, you'll find someone who can point you in the right direction uh, if you have time and energy and, and the will to volunteer. Uh, there's always a good cause out there. When Rotarians traveled to Mexico to deliver wheelchairs and when they went to Guatemala to support a rotoplast mission, John was there. Those experiences, he says, brought incredible satisfaction. Uh, and I saw the wonderful work that uh, the physicians, uh, physicians, anesthesiologists, surgeons, nurses, uh, they donate their time uh, to go to these foreign countries and perform these surgeries for nothing. So uh, the Rotary Club raised some money that year uh, and we operated on over 90 patients in about a seven day period. Uh, and so that was very rewarding. Although everyone who works with him knows better, John is extremely modest about his good deeds and downplays his part in the success of any event he supports. He says things get done because of the relationships people have in the community. So it's, it's one hand helping the other. Uh, if you have an event, uh, I'll come and help you, and if I have an event, you come and help me. So it's a very cooperative atmosphere, and it's a fun atmosphere to work in.
now please join me to welcome our recipient, John Gianola, to come forward to the stage. I don't remember when we first met, John, but I do remember that um, I get to know you so well was two years ago when you first joined the Lunar New Year Unity Parade Committee. Um, I can't believe it, it's been two years. And what I want to tell you is that you know, working with John just so much fun. His sense of humor, everybody probably knew, his uh, uh, diligence and uh, his leadership, he's everywhere. Um, he just made this uh, uh, volunteer work into like fun activities. Every meeting we laugh just because, uh, you know, he can turn the whole thing into just a fun, you know, joke. But still we get work done and very well. So I really appreciate it, John. You not only inspire, inspired all the people in the community, community and, and also you encourage people to come join. And that's really, you know, encouraging. I really appreciate that. Um, what I wanted to say is that's not it. John really involved a lot of the uh, uh, community volunteer work. So I'm going to read it out because it's a long list. I can't memorize that. <laughs> uh, we know John is Rotary president in 2003 to 2004. And he also an active members of the Cupertino Educational Endowment Foundation, Cupertino Community Services, the Lunar New Year Unity Parade, the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce, and the Fremont Union High School Educational Foundation. That's just a few of all. Um, and they're not just a title, I tell you. John is very, a very hands-on person. He, um, he put in a lot of hours, he's put in a lot of efforts, he shows his leadership, and um, he really, you know, kind of down-to-the-earth person. Um, what I want to tell you more, a little bit more detail about what John did it in 2005 to deserve this uh, 2005, um, this year's uh, Quest Award. In 2005, John chaired the sponsorship committee for the Henson Rotary Golf Tournament. He raised uh, almost 40,000 in sponsorships, and that money was used to support PACE, P-A-C-E, and that's in an organization for autistic children. And he also, I mentioned that he has involved so many of the uh, hands-on project, and I'm name a few, like uh, the pumpkin carving for both senior and the uh, senior citizens and autistic children, the kids shopping day, that we didn't see that, and Dr. Seuss reading day, and the kids fishing we saw on the news, uh, on the TV, um, and also the uh, CCS project and the YMCA project, a lot, a lot. As you can see that John has involved, really brought involvement into all the key elements for the community, the education, the seniors, the, the, the uh, children, the unities, everything. And I don't know what else, you know, it, it, it just, you really covered everything the community need and you give it all to us and really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to present you, I know there's a lot of more to share, but uh, uh, my time is limited. So I'm going to present you the, uh, the award. Before I do that, do you, need, do you want to bring your uh, uh, supporter, your major supporter, your wife, come forward? Because we have two things you're going to carry. This to Kathy. Okay, thank you. All right. And this for uh, John. And as Mayor have said earlier, it's pretty much similar because they all are the uh, hero and they're all really the uh, um, role models for our community. So here we go. John. Thank you. You never offer the microphone to a former Rotary president because they never turn it down. I'd just like to say I'm very honored to receive this award. Uh, Chris mentioned volunteer work. I don't really think it's work. It's, uh, it's, it's just fun to meet all the, the various people in this community that give their time for very, very good causes. So it's really not work. It's really a joy. And thank you again.
And now I would like to introduce my colleague, one of my colleagues, Council Member Patrick Kwok, to present the next recipient. Thank you, Chris. Uh, it's my honor to present the th third uh, Crest Award uh, to Mark McKenna. I chose Mark uh, McKenna uh, to present the award is that we have a similar day job. Uh, I work as an environmental engineer, and Mark also works as an environmental engineer to protect the environment. So let's hear a little bit more about Mark. Not many of us would have envied Mark McKenna's schedule last year. President of the Cupertino Historical Society, Chair of the Rotary's annual golf tournament, President-elect of the Chamber of Commerce, and key planner for the Jubilee. And this year, it's more of the same. You know, there's a couple good reasons I volunteer. One, and I don't know how many people look at it this way, but it makes me in my work better because I have to be more organized. I have to get things done, keep things on a time schedule. It's helped me become a better project manager because I've got so many things going on in my life. So I think professionally that's helped me. Mark is the safety and environmental manager for Stevens Creek Quarry, a job that he says led him naturally to take on the leadership roles for the Chamber of Commerce, the Rotary Club, and the Historical Society. Cupertino, as we all know, is very crucial to the community. We have to um, have a successful business community that will help the city government provide services for everyone. So that was a kind of natural extension of where I work. Rotary was kind of a natural extension of what I feel about life, giving back to the community. And then the Cupertino Historical Society are a couple of my passions where you have history and mining kind of combined. And it was just natural. And the third thing that really hooked me into the Cupertino Historical Society is it's a challenge. It's a struggling organization that needs help, and I love a good challenge. Mark rose in fine style to the challenge, taking on new duties when the Historical Society's executive director left, keeping the fundraising momentum alive, recruiting board members, and helping to develop a long-range plan for the group. Through it all, he sees a special connection to his efforts today and the city's future. You look at the Historical Society and the Stockelmeyer property that we're looking at making a living history farm on. You know, that would be another fingerprint that I could look back and say, okay, that's, that's there. All this is to improve the community. You know, make, make the world a better place to live. His dream, he says, is to leave the world in better shape than when he found it. And that's the key to why he spends countless hours volunteering. Well, some people would say I'm not that bright, but um, actually I tend to think that it's because if you look at the organizations that I do volunteer for, I feel that they are doing a tremendous job for this community. They are making a difference. There will be changes in Cupertino that, you know, I can look back and say, okay, I had you know, you can see my fingerprint on there. I may not have been instrumental there, but I helped push that along. And what about his schedule this year? You look at my calendar and it's just typically full of, you know, a dinner here or a golf tournament or, I know it sounds like a tough life, but someone's got to do it. Mark, would you like to come and join me? <laughs> Mark is no stranger to uh, our community and also to the uh, uh, city of Cupertino because I see him practically come to council meeting, practically every meeting, either representing the Cupertino Historical Society or the Chamber of Commerce or some uh, voluntary uh, functions. I was talking to Mark before the meeting. I said, I have 10 pages of volunteer works. 
that uh, I have to cover this evening. He said, uh, I said, if you don't mind, I lock it down to five pages. And Mark looked at me and said, well, how about a couple of sentences? But if I say a couple of sentences, I don't think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm deserving you any justice because you have done so much for Cupertino. Uh, a leader, a true leader is somebody that uh, gets the work done through uh, the others. But in case of Mark, he's really a true leader because he's a role model. He sets a good examples, get the work done. When it's not done, he tries to do it by himself. Uh, Mark has been uh, uh, served in several capacities, namely uh, president of the Cupertino Historical Society, uh, the, the uh, Chamber of Commerce. Right now, he's serving as the president and many, many functions in the uh, rotaries and helping out on the Golden Jubilee. Let me just uh, cite a couple of examples. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, President elect 2005, currently President 2006 on a calendar. Rotary Club of Cupertino, Chair of the Annual Golf Tournament of 2005, previously a board member. Cupertino Historical Society, President elect and President Effective, July 105. Might be one of the presidents for longest tenures in two years, 05 and 06. Uh, through his position at Stevens uh, Creek Quarry, Mark has instrumental in working with neighbors to see that the needs are protected by the quarry. He also initiated a community newsletter from the quarry to keep the community aware of happenings in the quarry. Uh, so with the 2005 activities in relation to the ward, uh, many, many contributions, uh, head of finance, co-chair of children area, liaison with World Trade Cup and city staff, uh, class uh, sponsorship, and so on and so forth. So it's my pleasure to present you with the award. Would you like to have any of your supporter here to receive the award? Or I don't to have any. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is the Crest Award. And uh, this is the proclamation from the Mayor and the City Council. Once again, thank you very much for your great effort in making Cupertino a better place to live. We are really appreciate it. Thank you. Like to say something? I, there's a lot of things I could say. One, um, I was raised giving back to the community, doing volunteer work, so it's a natural extent. Um, one of the other things I'd like to say thanks to is my family. They've always been there behind me to back me up whenever I got in too deep. I always knew they were there. Um, there were always a couple friends in the past couple of years that have always helped me along, mentored me. One is the recipient right before me, John G. Vanola. He, uh, he and I started at Hanson at, within a month of each other back in 98. I taught him everything he knows about cement. <laughs> and he's helped me along teaching me how to work with boards and it's, it's helped. John has a lot of wisdom that he's willing to share with everyone. The other person that's in the audience tonight is Mr. Mike Folks. He's also helped me, mentored me along help me get to be the person I am. And finally, I'd just like to say, you know, I've, I didn't want the award. Um, I think it's just a natural extent of being a person, being, making the community better, and I'd just like to thank you. I'm honored. Thank you, Mark. It's my pleasure to introduce my colleague, uh, Dolly Sandoval, to present the next award. Thank you for coming this evening. It's truly my pleasure to introduce to you the next recipient of our Crest Award this evening, and that is Cookie Quilchers. And I'm gonna ask Cookie to come up after we show the video. Thank you. Piece by piece, Cookie Hoover has stitched together a group of volunteers whose quilts have brought comfort to young and old all over the world. Most of the members of Cookie's Quilters, as the group is known, are seniors who live at Chateau Cupertino. Cookie brought them together when she heard that De Anza College was about to open its child development center. They had a beautiful building. They had the grant, 
nothing in it. So I thought, I found my spot. So I talked to the people at the Child Development Center and we decided the children needed something to be on the floor with. And we started making quilts. And everyone was just so enthused where I live at the Chateau and supportive. So we started and we would sew them and then bring them down at a luncheon and the people there would tie them. We ended up with a hundred quilts. But the industrious quilters had only just begun. With $250 from the Rotary Club and some donated scraps of material, the group went international, hooking up with the Rotary's worldwide philanthropic efforts. They were going to Guatemala with the doctors who do the cleft palates, and they were going to Mexico, and they were going to China. And because we had fulfilled the 100 that were needed right now, we starting to sh started to share. Some of them even delivered their handiwork in person. I think the trip we just made to Mexico City with the Rotary, where we actually gave the quilts to these children who are receiving um, wheelchairs, who some of them have never been out of their houses. And you not only get a wheelchair, but then they get this darling quilt. And they're just, they're overcome. And I said, I shed more tears on that trip than <laughs> you could ever imagine. Cookies Quilters have sent their patchwork blankets to servicemen in Iraq and often donate them for community fundraisers. What keeps them going? I think it makes you younger. I think that all of this makes us feel like we're a part of the community and part of whatever is going on. It makes you feel good that you can share something, you know. We're not all great artists and we're not all philanthropic or rich people, but every little thing counts. Always on the lookout for more volunteers, Cookie even has boys from Cupertino High's Horizon program cutting and sewing for her. My ears are always open. <laughs> I sometimes go into the fabric stores and, and see if people have any extra time. and. It's amazing though, they have heard about us and I do get some very nice phone calls and offers and people have been just amazing. To me that it started so small and with no great ambition it has become a very rewarding experience. Hoover, would you please join me? As Cookie is making her way up here, I'd like you to think back to your early days. Come on up. How many of you remember that blankie you used to have as you were crawling up for a nap? Raise your hand. I know it's more than Michael. Thank you. How many of you still have that blankie? How many of you wish you did? <laughs> many nights up here on the dais, I wish I did. As you saw from this brief, brief presentation, a gift of love, a gift of warmth, can really, truly change a person's life. It certainly did for Cookie and all the volunteers at Chateau Cupertino. Who would have thought, Cookie, that when you hooked up with Mickey Wheat several years ago and went toward the De Anza, uh, Child Development Center, that you would have at, by now produced hundreds of quilts for children of need throughout the country and throughout our world. Whether you were busy sewing quilts for children in Guatemala or in Mexico City or for servicemen in Iraq, you've brought many um, tears and a lot of heart to what you do. And you're not just doing it all by yourself. Well, you have a huge crew, and I'm going to ask them to come up in a moment, um, but you have a huge crew that you work with there at the Chateau Cupertino. They've had students, second graders at Briarwood Elementary School, high school students as you saw at the Horizon, uh, through the Horizon program at Cupertino High School, who all have given a little heart to somebody in need. That circle of caring, though, is not just for those recipients of, our, of the quilts. 
but it's for all the, it's all the love that's shared between those who quilt and those who learn a little bit more, those who don't donate monetarily and those who give fabric to our society. So please, if I could have all the quilters come up, that would be great. And I know there's a lot of you, but I think it speaks to the world of, that you, to the love that you share. As we know, the saying goes, it takes a village to raise children. It takes a lot of people in a community to give Cupertino its heart. Cookie, would you like to come up and say a few words? I'm a little in awe of what has happened when I hear all of these people that went before me. And I've only been in, back in Cupertino for seven and a half years. And I think this is the highlight. And I want to thank all these people, because it's not just me, it's all of them. And especially, I got to tell you, Eleanor, my right hand person who does everything for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. And on behalf of the city of Cupertino, Eleanor, I'll give you the award, the proclamation, excuse me. And on behalf of the city of Cupertino, thank you so much for sharing your heart with everyone else. Thank you. And right after he gets his hug, I'd like Richard Lowenthal to come back up. That was wonderful. I, I, I get the uh, opportunity to present two awards tonight because Oren's off in China doing, uh, helping out people there. Um, so on behalf of Oren, I'll present this next award. Uh, the next award uh, goes to some, some good friends in a great organization, the Organization of Special Needs Families. Roll the tape, please. One of the city's biggest success stories was born from the loneliness and sorrow of a single Cupertino family. The Organization of Special Needs Families, today serving hundreds of individuals, began with a boy named Jonathan and his mother. The youngest of Li Wei and Chua Wei's three children, Jonathan was diagnosed with autism at age four. I don't even know what it, how to spell autism. I have to check out the, t the book library and at that, that time, only three or four textbooks available. And it's so hard for me, uh, and so hard for me to grieve, to accept the fact. And of course, the loneliness, the separation, you know, the nature, so nature is separate from my family and other families. I used to have many, many friends, but after Jonathan have diagnosed with autism, they have disappeared because it's so different. Uh, we don't 
we don't do things together anymore. And those loneliness um, 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 very, very, very painful. And and my family. It's very difficult those years. A former math teacher in Taiwan, Li Wei worked with her son at home, helping him to develop socially, physically, and emotionally. The task was daunting, though, and she wanted to be better equipped for it, so she enrolled in a master's degree program at San Jose State for special education. My major, my background is mathematics. And the science field, okay, is very different from the education field. And you can see uh, English is my weakness. English is, language is my weakness. A passion to help others like her son, though, was much stronger than a language barrier. She completed the master's program in four years, and in 2002, when Jonathan was 12, the Ways founded the nonprofit organization of special needs families. Li Wei knew exactly what she wanted to give to special needs kids after school and weekend enrichment programs and an integrated social group where they could play and learn. For their parents, training, resources, and all the support they needed. In a classroom at St. Jude's Church, her dream was realized. We run computer class, we run APE, adult PE, we run music, music class, and we also have occupational therapy classes there. And from four kids uh, until today, we have 50 kids coming in Saturday, uh, just for that program. And of course, because the needs coming, it needs, um, the needs is uh, tremendous. Today, the organization has more than 700 volunteers, mostly high school students, and operates a child care program, a summer camp, and a new training program for independent living skills. But Li Wei says more work, more funding, and more programs are still needed. I have a dream that um, we have, we can have a place. Um, um, so, the children with special needs and their typical peers can play and learn together. So far, we still, we still have a big gap to reach that. Um, kids with special needs, they end up in special day class. Um, and there's not much progress after school. Um, there's no physical, no, no place that um, they can pray and learn from the early on. You know, and talk about kids is everybody can come into activity together, regardless of their culture difference, their language difference, or disabilities. That's my dream. Please uh, join me in it with a round of applause as, uh, as Li Wei Wei comes up to the stage. Li Wei. Okay, you can bring reinforcements. <laughs> There's all kinds of rules, you know, for us tonight, and we're all breaking them all because uh, this is really about uh, about the recipients and what they want. So, um, I've known Li Wei for oh my, what maybe five five six years, um, and and let me let me say, well, we'll have no, nah, it's fine. Uh, I think Li Wei's. The, probably the most common common word in Li Wei's vocabulary is is love, which she's showing. Um, you know when uh, when Li Wei this is this by the way this is Li Wei's, Li Wei's husband Chi Wa, and Sandy Zander. You know, you know Li Wei and and Chi Wa have had three beautiful children, uh, and. 
when Jonathan was born, they were faced with some challenges. And they kind of had two ways to go, right? They could, they could say, woe is me, uh, and decide that they were victims. Uh, but instead, Li Wei saw what it's like to be the parent uh, and the family, a family with a, with a kid with special needs. Uh, and her reaction was not to self-pity. Her reaction was to help other families. And that's what OSF does. OSF helps other families. And it's just, just spectacular that Li Wei and, and her husband Chi Wa's uh, reaction to adversity has been to help others. Uh, I think nothing more epitomizes uh, the Crest Award and volunteerism than what you've done for your community and what you've done for others in the face of adversity. Um, just a, a few details, uh, they serve hundreds of children, and maybe more importantly, they teach hundreds of other children how to work with autistic kids, other kids with special needs. Um, they have technology programs, music programs, art programs. Uh, they have an after school programs, sports programs. This lets these kids be able to participate like any other kid in the kinds of things we love to do. One of the things I've learned about these kids is you let them approach you. You know, I've had the, the pleasure of, um, of refereeing soccer games with these kids, and nothing could be more fun than to see the, the uh, faces of the parents of these kids when they score goals. Uh, so, but uh, let's... Um, Let's congratulate. <laughs> this is part of the challenge, actually, that they face. Well, maybe it's with all kids. Um, anyway, let me uh, please present this award. It looks like there's some other awards coming here, too. Uh, to Li Wei Wei, to Chi Wa, and to all of OSF. It goes to the school. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Yeah. Goodbye. That's it. <laughs> Best speech yet. Uh, let's see. Sandy Zander's one of your board members, I think. Uh, and we have others. Do we have others here in the audience? Yes, Jennifer. Jennifer. Any other board members of OSF? Come on up. And then, may I invite Li Wei, uh, you to come and say a word or two, please. Thank you for all for coming tonight. Um, this is truly a teamwork. Um, how many men and family have been helped by OSF? It's by more than 700, close to 800 volunteers' participation. I, at this moment, I'd like to have uh, one of the uh, examples that Sandy Zender to speak some words on behalf of OSF. Typical of Li Wei and Chi Hua, they want somebody else to stand in and take some of the glory, and asked me to say a few words tonight. This is the greatest example I can think of, of taking the lemons that life gives you and making lemonade. If you go to St. Jude's Church on any Saturday afternoon, you see the most delightful interaction between kids that are really needy and kids that have lots of love to give and are learning to work with needy children. And this is such a shining example of the kind of work that does the heart good. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say about this is that Cupertino has become a destination spot for kids with special needs because of Li Wei and Chi Hua and the work that they have put into this foundation. There could not be a more deserving recipient than this organization. Thank you. I'm very honored uh, to receive this. Uh, I think uh, in OSF, we talk about heart. So 
it's about the heart in everyone. And uh, as long as we show our love to each other, then this is going to be a great city. And uh, please welcome all the OSF families that are here. Please stand up. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. Well, thank you uh, for, your, uh, for coming here tonight and recognizing these spectacular volunteers. Uh, I don't want to get between you and the food um, much longer, um, but before, before we all go away, I'm wondering if, if all the people, uh, all the awardees could come up for a group picture. There's, uh, we've, been, we've had a request to take some pictures of everybody. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind all crowding up on the stage. And those of you who are not awardees, you can run back and get the first chance at the food. So uh, thank you for coming tonight, uh, and we're adjourned. Just do it. I mean, there are enough organizations here, and there's enough need, not only in this community, but in a lot of other communities. Uh, just uh, step forward. You'll, you'll find someone who can point you in the right direction. Uh, if you have time and energy and, and the will to volunteer, uh, there's always a good cause out there. Uh, when you do a good job, you get a sense of accomplishment. And with volunteer work, you get that same sense of accomplishment, but yet there's a, a goal beyond that, and that's the organization that you're trying to help. So I'm looking forward to work with you on many community-related activities. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. All this is to improve the community, you know, make, make the world a better place to live. And just making sure that at the end of the day, I really have accomplished something for the good of the community, it just helps me get up and look at myself in the mirror every morning. My um, cap capability to help not only my son, so also help close to 200 families uh, we send our daughter with special needs, and I feel so good with that. You know, my passion is inclusion, inclusive to community, that all the people can live a normal and active life, just like you and me. Giving is more satisfactory than receiving. It's like at Christmas, you, give, you prepare a gift and you see the joy that somebody takes in it, or you hear about it, and that makes you feel really good as compared to just opening a package, and you know, which is nice, but you get more good out of giving than you do out of receiving, that's all I can say. My mother said when I was a little girl, she said, when you do for somebody, it always comes back double. And I think it's quadruple. And I think the people that have helped me have felt the same way. <laughs>